everyone, today we are going to be talking about sugar. Now, I know we all love our sweet treats, but I really think that this information is so important to know. Even if you just have it in the back of your mind, it will help you make better choices throughout your days. So let's get right into it and talk about what sugar does to your body, how it affects your health, and how you know whether you are absolutely addicted to it. Here are the signs that you may be addicted to sugar. Feeling sluggish or tired regularly. Eating sweets or high carb foods even when you're not hungry. Getting colds or coughs often. Always, always feeling hungry. Finding yourself thinking and dreaming about unhealthy food very often. Extreme mood swings on a regular basis. Headaches or agitation, especially when you haven't had your sugar fix for the day. Muscle or joint pain. You use sugar to soothe your emotional ups and downs. Now, I don't know about you, but I can relate to quite a few of those on the list. But don't worry, I do have a video on how you can curb your sugar cravings. So go ahead and check that out. I really think it's some useful, very relatable, easy tips that you can add into your daily lifestyle to help you with these sugar cravings. But let's get going on understanding what does sugar really do to our body and why is it so terrible? The average American person consumes three times more than the recommended amount. The recommendations say that women can have up to six teaspoons, that's about 24 grams of sugar, and men can have up to 32 grams of sugar, which is nine teaspoons. That is a maximum. It is not a requirement. It is saying that that is the maximum amount of sugar that you should be consuming on a daily basis. Now, sugars actually naturally occur in foods too, in things like carbohydrates, fruits, starchy vegetables, whole grains, and consume consuming whole foods that actually contain these natural sugars is completely okay because these foods have fiber, minerals, vitamins, proteins that actually allows your body to digest them at a slower pace. It supplies a steady source of energy to our body and to our cells. But when we eat simple carbohydrates, and those are the highly processed foods, it actually gives our body a rush of energy. But it's a short-term energy boost and it raises our blood sugar levels so high and you'll find very quickly that you're hungry again. The taste of sugar also releases endorphins in our body, which makes us feel um, more relaxed and gives us a state of calm, but also feels like a natural high. A lot of research done on the effect of sugar on the brain has shown that it actually affects similar pathways to drug addiction. Ayurveda actually says that the sweet taste is vital in our diet. It says that it provides us with the qualities of nourishment, grounding, and calming. And it also gives us a lot of strength, contentment, and vitality. In excess though, this taste can block our channels and make our bodies slow down. But Ayurveda also says that sweetness doesn't mean sugar. It also comes from the natural sources like carbohydrates, fruits and starchy vegetables. And having a wide variety of these in our diet actually allows us to feel balanced. And so then we don't end up craving or having intense cravings for these specific tastes or flavors. Having a little bit of sugar now and then in a controlled way is completely fine. But long-term use of high amounts of sugar can have significant impact on your health. Some of the long-term effects include things like inflammation and research has shown that a lot of conditions that are linked to inflammation like rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis find a reduction in inflammation when sugar intake is reduced. I can say from personal experience with family members and friends who have had these conditions that they have seen a significant difference in times when they have had high sugar intake and not. In fact they've told me that when they have things that are highly processed or that have a lot of refined sugar, they feel the pain in their joints immediately. Within an hour, they notice a difference in their body. And that leads us to diabetes. Now, there's often a misconception that eating sugar equals diabetes. And that's not entirely true. There's not a direct correlation, but it affects the body in the same way. When our blood sugar levels are constantly elevated, it puts a lot of pressure on our pancreas. Our pancreas is having to work hard to produce insulin, which is the hormone that brings down our sugar levels but if our body is unable to produce enough insulin blood sugar levels stay high and then our body becomes insulin resistant which is one form of diabetes high amounts of sugar can overload the liver the liver actually metabolizes sugar in the same way as alcohol and so it converts the carbohydrates or the sugars into fat over time this leads to a accumulation of fat in the body which can lead to fatty liver disease some research that I found really interesting was that sugar was linked to the ability to retain information or learn new information. It said that with focus, attention, and even how our brain functions can be affected by the amount of sugar that we are eating. 
A lot of the times we're eating sugar and we don't even know it. It's hidden in different forms, in different names, even in foods that you wouldn't think of as being sweet, like pasta sauces and breads. So we really need to get used to reading labels and taking it into our own hands, understanding what food am I putting into my body? What ingredients are in the packaged foods that I am buying? And even if you are not somebody who enjoys cooking or enjoys learning about food, really it's about your health. It's about you taking control of your health and being more aware of what you're putting into your body that could be causing a lot more harm than good. Honestly, the best way to avoid this is by having a diet which is predominantly maybe 70 to 80 percent based on natural foods rather than processed foods so the less that you have within a packet the better chances you have of eating hidden ingredients but just to make you aware here are some of sugar's favorite aliases organic raw sugar yes it's organic but that doesn't mean it's not sugar corn syrup Yes, corn is a vegetable, but no, corn syrup does not count as one of your five a day. The oses, they're a cheeky bunch. They come in the form of sucrose, lactose, maltose, dextrose, fructose. There's a lot of them, so beware. Now there are some natural sugars that you might see like maple syrup, molasses, honey. They are better options but they will still translate in your body or be digested in your body in the same way as sugars. So even though they are the better option, we still need to be mindful about how much of them we are having. There's also fruit juice concentrates. Now fruit juice concentrates do come from fruit but it's extracted and manipulated in a way where it's almost like drinking sugar but in juice form. Now let's play a game of what has more sugar? One cup of original vanilla almond milk or three Chips Ahoy cookies. It's the almond milk. A 20 ounce can of Coke or a Snickers bar. It's the Coke can. A simple jar of pasta sauce or four Oreo cookies. It's the tomato sauce. A wonderful Cliff energy bar to get you through your day or a Dunkin Donut. It's the Cliff bar and you could eat six of those Dunkin Donuts for the same amount as the Cliff Bar. But that's just the sugar raised donut, none of the glazed ones. A tablespoon or a squirt of ketchup in your burger. Or four Oreo cookies. That's right, it's the tablespoon of ketchup. A delightful fruity yogurt. Or a box of Sour Patch Kids. It is in fact the fruit yogurt. A granola bar to start your day or a Snickers for your midday snack. And the granola bar beats the Snickers by a couple grams. A delicious, decadent chocolate cake slice with frosting or your daily Starbucks Frappuccino. Starbucks have done it again. It is in fact the daily frap. So I hope that information was useful for you. I really was sharing it just for awareness. I think that we as humans are so used to putting our lives into other people's hands, whether it is the people who make our food, um, the people who we go to see when we're feeling unwell. I think it's so important for the parts that we can have handle on, the parts that we are able to control, that we try to and that we become more aware of. And hopefully this simple information is going to make you a little bit more aware when you're walking through those grocery aisles, when you are picking up something to eat when you're wake, making your way through your day and you're counting up the grams of sugar that you completely had no idea was going into your body. It's nothing to be scared of, it's nothing to feel fearful of, it is purely just awareness and I think the more that we are in know of the less fear and the less worry that we would have about it. So I hope this helped and sending you all so much love and gratitude. And remember, I do have, like I said, another video which talks about how we can curb our sugar cravings for good. Sending you all so much love and gratitude and hope you have a wonderful week. Ah! If you liked this video, or even if you didn't like it at all, I'd really appreciate if you left a comment so I can get to know you just as you're getting to know me through these videos.